A lot of people say, I want to live my best life. Well, your best life is going to be carved out by the decisions you make that honor God. That's your best life because they don't allow for the conditions to dictate what you do. How can you have the blessed, victorious Christian life on earth? And what does that kind of life look like? Answers come your way next on today's Destined for Victory with Pastor Paul Shepard. Hello and thanks for stopping by. In the first few verses of Psalm chapter 1, God explains how you can enjoy the abundant Christian life. He reminds us that blessed people don't live by their feelings or their conditions. They live by their decisions. Today, Pastor Paul reminds us that healthy, godly decisions ultimately lead to a life that bears genuine fruit, and that is a blessing to those around us. Stay with us now, or stop by our newly redesigned website, PastorPaul.net, to hear any recent Destined for Victory message on demand. That's PastorPaul.net. Now, here is Pastor Paul. He's Senior Pastor at Destiny Christian Fellowship in Fremont, California, and he has today's message, Having Roots That Run Deep. Psalms 1, verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. I've been calling this series Positioning Yourself for Prosperity. And let me remind you that when we talk about prosperity and when the Bible talks about prosperity, it's not talking merely about money. Now, it doesn't negate the fact that God prospers us and that can include money. But when the Bible speaks of prosperity, it's speaking of all around being blessed. To be a blessed person, a prosperous person, is to be a person who lives under God's favor, who has God intervene on his or her behalf at various points in their life. And so I want you to understand, we're not talking merely about cribs and cars and cash when we talk about prosperity. We are talking about the blessing of God resting on your life. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you know, as the Bible said about Joseph, that the Lord is with you. And that's the thing we want to know how to position ourselves to be. In the first verse, we learned that when you're positioning yourself for prosperity, you listen to godly wisdom. And I don't have time to really walk you through that. We also learned that you stay in your lane and we learned that you maintain an attitude that honors God and respects others. And then when we studied the second verse in the last message, we learned that when you're positioning yourself for prosperity, you joyfully take in and live out God's word. Today, I want to focus on verse three as I wrap up this short series. Look at what it says again. He shall be like a tree. And by the way, when the Bible says he, that's not a gender designation. So please understand the correct translation is that person. Male or female, that person shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever that person does shall prosper. And I want you to know that God says in this passage through the psalmist David that when you choose not to live according to the things he speaks of in verse one. And when you choose to incorporate into your life what he says in verse two, here are the results. I want you to understand that the result of being a blessed person is found here in verse three. And notice that the result is not a mystery. It doesn't say if you refuse to do these things and choose to do verse two, then you might be blessed. That's not what David said at all. He didn't say if everything works out, if you get all your ducks lined up, 
You got to remember when you're reading the word of God, you're not reading if and maybe and if everything shakes out. God is not like your uncle. I don't know if y'all had them, but I'd grow up with different uncles. They always had, oh, I'm trying, working on something. Working on something. If it all works out, I'll let you know. I don't need, uh -uh, I don't need that. God is not like your uncle who might or might not come through with what they're trying to do. When God gives you his word, it is so. He's not trying to make it happen, hoping to make it happen. He's gonna make it happen. You can rely on him. This is not a mystery. David said, that person shall be. I came to tell somebody as I wrap up this short series, you shall be blessed in a certain way because you have done what David has exhorted us to do and you refused the things that he has told us to refuse. In other words, blessed people don't live by their feelings or by their conditions. Blessed people live by their decisions and their decisions have put them in the position to be blessed. It's not chance work. It's not guesswork. It's not maybe. It's not if you're lucky. We don't believe in luck in the body of Christ. Uh uh. We believe in being blessed. And being blessed is better than being lucky because that means if I do what God tells me he wants out of my life, he said you shall be. And I came to tell you what you shall be if you'll get in obedience to God's word. He says you shall be. God is a God who speaks in certainties, not in mites or in maybes. This is a definite word. I want you to know in general, living your best life. A lot of people say, I want to live my best life. Well, your best life is going to be carved out by the decisions you make that honor God. That's your best life is to live according to those decisions that honor God. Why? Because they don't allow for the conditions to dictate what you do. See, here's what a lot of people do. They live by what happens to them. You can't be blessed by living according and reacting to what happens to you. Blessed people dictate what happens. And when conditions happen, it doesn't take them off their course. Why? Because their course was preset, predetermined through my obedience to God, through my love for him, through my desire to do his will. I already know what I'm going to do. Don't live by your conditions, brothers and sisters. Please live by your decisions. I have decided here's the way I'm going to go because this honors God, this respects people, and this will put me in the position to prosper. And that's what you want to do. Be a blessed person who is intentional about living your life. I say it a lot. Do not let your feelings drive the vehicle of your life. We got too many people. I didn't feel like it. Well, what's that got to do with anything? You got to live by what you decide to do, not how you feel like living. How many know if I do everything I feel like doing, I told you in the last message, in, in some cases, somebody would be dead. Come on, you just be honest. I know you got your church clothes on, but be honest for a minute. If I do everything I feel like doing, I'm taking a few folk out. And when God asks me what happened to them, you say, I don't know. Why? Because your feelings are not reliable. So you got to live by your decisions, not your conditions or your feelings. You got to be a person that makes things happen. You know, there are three kinds of people in the world. There are people who make things happen. There are people who watch things happen. And there are people who ask what happened. <laughs> you met them, don't you? They, they so clueless. They just see a bunch of y'all talking about something and they pop their head in the circle and say, what happened? just as clueless as they know how to be. Other people watch things happen. They're always listening. They're always zooming in and zeroing in on what somebody else is doing. There are people spend their whole lives blogging about what other folk are doing. Amen. Don't be one of them. Be somebody who makes things happen so that you can get to blog about what you're doing. Here's what I'm doing and here's how God's blessing me because of it. Don't go away. The second half of Pastor Paul Shepard's message is coming right up. 
We want to thank all of you who support Destined for Victory with your prayers and financial support, gifts that help Pastor Paul share the joy of the gospel message with a growing audience. Destined for Victory is supported entirely by friends like you, so please prayerfully consider making a generous gift to Destined for Victory today. Give online safely and securely from our website, pastorpaul.net, or give us a call at 855-339-5500. Again, the number, 855-339-5500. Now, here's Pastor Paul with the second half of today's message, having roots that run deep. Don't be a person who just watches things happen. Don't be speck in the Tater family. (laughs) You know, the Tater family got different kinds of people. Got speck in there, got commie Tater in there, commie and speck, eerie in there, irritating folk. And then you got the bossy folk, that's Dick in the Tater family. Uh-uh, you don't need to be in the Tater family. You need to be a person who makes things happen. And God will bless what you do when you act in obedience to his word. So I want you to notice that this verse starts out assuring you this is not guesswork. There's no mystery here. If you refuse verse one and if you choose verse two, he says you shall B. God is going to bless you, not probably will, not if everything works out. What is the result of you making the proper decisions that honor God and respect others? What's the result of that? He said, you'll be like a tree. You'll be like a tree. I love that. What does a tree suggest uh, for our purposes in this message? Let me just give you five things and I'll let you go. The first thing I want you to understand is you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. What does that mean? That means God's going to bless you and your life will be like a tree planted, very firm, very steady by a river of water. What's the significance of that? It's because this tree that God's going to make you has roots, roots that run deep and they never get dry. They never lack nourishment. Why? Because the river is feeding the roots all the time. You get that picture? The idea is that true never shrivels up, never dries up. Why? It is constantly nourished from within, from underground. You don't even see it, but it's being fed nourishment all the time. You know, the best things often are things you can't see. When you see a great skyscraper, we all admire the skyscraper, but if you hear that a great building is going up and you hear about the design plans, just wait a little while and you're going to see that they, first of all, they excavate. They tear out all the stuff that's on the surface there right now. And the first way you build a skyscraper is you go down. You don't build it by going up. They don't start by putting brick on brick. No, no, they start down. For every certain height, there's going to be a corresponding depth. I'm preaching already. You're waiting for me to preach, and I'm already preaching. And it can't go high until it goes low first. In fact, if you see them and all they're doing is starting up, don't you go in that building. Why? Because any old storm will knock it down. They go downward. And if it's going to be a skyscraper, just watch it. I mean, they go significantly down in the ground because the foundation for as high as you're going to go, you got to strengthen how it is built. And that starts with the foundation. Well, that's what a tree already knows. Trees grow upward, but you don't see they're really being fed from below. And I need you to know that God said, I'm going to make you a tree so that the best of you, what is admired by other people is really not the key to your success. The key to your success is what nobody sees. I came to tell somebody that's why you got to go deep in God, because you're going to be as successful as you're willing to go deep. If you'll let God have his way in your life, if you'll let God do what he wants to do in your life, people won't see your prayers. People won't see your reading the word. People won't see your ministering to folk. People won't see all the stuff you do that doesn't get the uh, high attention, but the Lord will see it. And the Lord who sees in secret will reward you openly. 
I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you what I've experienced. God will bless you because you go down before you go up. He'll bless you because you pray before you act. He'll bless you because you meditate before you speak. And the deeper you go, the higher he'll let you rise. And I want you to know, God said, if you will refuse verse one and choose verse two, I'm going to make you a tree. I'm going to make you a tree planted by a river. You're not waiting for rain because the river is always going to be there. And so you're fed from underneath. And God said, I'm going to make my people trees. I'm going to make you like a tree. So the first thing is that suggests a tree in the Bible suggests success. Now, when I say success, I don't mean success by the world standards because the world has some pretty fickle definitions of success. Some people think they're successful because they have money. I came to tell you money doesn't make you successful. Not in God's sense. In God's sense, you're successful when you take what he's given you and you give it back to him in obedience so he can bless your life. Success is not your bottom line. Success is how you got where you are. So we got to understand success by God's definition is very different. Let me give you a biblical framework for it. In Joshua chapter one, Moses has died. Joshua now has to lead Israel and God's preparing him to do that. He said, you all have to cross over. And then he tells him how to begin to claim the promised land. And one of the things he says in Joshua chapter one is after he gives him various instructions, he said, don't turn from this to the left or to the right. In other words, don't put your thimble full of brains in my business. When I tell you what to do, God says, do exactly what I told you to do. Don't turn from the left or to the right. He says, then you will be prosperous and then you will have good success. Good success. God said, if you do what I told you, Joshua, I'm going to give you good success. What does that tell you? That tells you some success is not good. Not all success, apparent success is good. Again, being blessed means you have God's favor on you and he takes what he blesses you to have and he gets into it and he multiplies it and he uses it for his glory. There are a whole lot of people, all the time people are winning in a lotto or something. That doesn't mean they're blessed. That means they got some sort of windfall of money. And some of them, every now and then you see these really, really big jackpots and people get ridiculous money. That doesn't mean they're blessed. Being blessed means you allow God to have rule over every area of your life. And he will tell you what to do with all the money you have, whether you worked it on your everyday job and he gave you a windfall, an unexpected thing in your business. But if God does it, then God gets the glory. And that's what you want to be. You want to be a blessed person. Now, I don't play lotto. I don't put my life in chance's hands. But if you do, I just want you to know, if you hit, you still owe God a tithe and offer. <laughs> Let me just run that right by you real quick. Oh, well, he said that he don't play it. So I don't play it. If you do, I would not recommend it. I'd rather you invest your money more soundly. But if that's the choice you make and, and you hit, bring, bring ye all the tithe. <laughs> Into the storehouse. (laughs) Pastor, not crazy. Because God will bless it. He'll bless us to use it for his glory. But my point is, you don't want to look for a windfall of chance. In fact, here's what God said to Joshua. You will make your way prosperous. I'd rather make my way prosperous than to just try to luck up on something. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Make your way prosperous by doing what God tells you to do. He'll get in the work of your hands and he'll bless it. I know many kingdom first millionaires who say God gave this to me and I listen to him about every usage of this money he blessed me with. I talked years ago, I talked to a a Christian millionaire. He took me out to lunch. He just wanted to introduce himself to me because I was new to the area at the time. And he began to tell me his story of being a businessman. And he was one of those early venture capitalists here in the Silicon Valley. And he said, the next thing you know, pastor, he said, I was making more money than I knew what to do with. I said, say what? (laughs) I didn't know there was such a thing. You can make more money than you know what to do with? Wow, wouldn't that be fun to try? (laughs) 
But he wasn't bragging. He was testifying because he's kingdom first. He said, I listen to God. Everything I do with this is because it's the will of God. I'm not just all about cash and cars and cribs. I'm about kingdom life doing the will of God. That's what it means to be successful. Because at the end of the day, what does it profit a man, Jesus said, if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? That's not success. If you lose your soul, you weren't successful. You see these stupid bumper stickers, he who, who dies with the most stuff wins. Are you kidding me? You need to cover that up. If you got that on your car, cover it up with one that says, he who dies with the most stuff is still dead. You're not coming back, which means you better use it here and now for God's glory. And you need to make sure it's well cared for even after you're gone, that your resources are going to do that, which glorifies God. From Psalm 1, verse 3, here's what God's definition of success looks like. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Thanks so much for being here for today's message, Having Roots That Run Deep. Pastor Paul joins me from his studio in California now. Pastor, we're airing several messages at the beginning of May centered on the idea of positioning ourselves for prosperity. How do you define prosperity, and what are some keys in making sure that we are positioned for it? Yeah, I'm really glad to be able to share a series about this because We must understand, we especially who live in a prosperous place like the United States and listeners in other countries that are listening to me, the reality is we're so blessed. We have so much that we can thank God for in terms of financial and material blessings. But really the true definition, biblically speaking, of prosperity is to learn the will of God, Mm -hmm. to live by it and to let him give you the byproducts of living in the center of his will. So prosperity from a biblical standpoint is not the stuff, but it is obeying God and letting him bring into our lives everything we need. It's much like what Jesus said in Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then everything you need, God will add it to your life. I have often said to the Lord, God, I would thank you for every financial, every material blessing you want to give me that I haven't yet received. But meanwhile, I'm going to live in constant gratitude as a result of the things you've already given me to do, because in doing your will, I position myself to experience your best in my life. And I hope this series will be a blessing to everyone who hears it. Well, it certainly was a blessing to me, Pastor. Again, the series is called Position Yourself for Prosperity. And today is the final message in this series, but you will find all five messages online and available to listen to on demand or download at PastorPaul.net. Well, in just a few days, we'll once again celebrate the mothers in our lives, and we've got a great new resource to share with you, a study guide from InterVarsity Press called Motherhood Being Grounded in Christ. Being a mom can be complicated. It brings joy and love, but it can also come with its fair share of frustration. In this 10-lesson study on biblical motherhood, student minister and mother Patty Pell helps you discover the truth about who you are, who God is, and how He sees you. As you learn to rest in your identity in Christ, you'll be able to love your children the way God does and help them understand their own identity as children of God. That's Motherhood Being Grounded in Christ, and it's our thank you gift this month for your generous donation to Destin for Victory. So please call 855-339-5500 or visit pastorpaul.net to make a safe and secure donation online. And you can always mail your gift to Destin for Victory, Post Office Box 1767, Fremont, California, 94538. God wants to develop in us the fruit of the Spirit, not the fake fruit of pretending like you are who you are not. God wants to make us the real deal in this world. That's the only thing that'll give life. That's Monday in Pastor Paul Shepard's message, A Word to Moms. Until then, remember, he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. In Christ, 
you are destined for victory.